Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. Unfortunately, I was dealing with some health issues during the past few months and I couldn't uh, record any new episodes. Um, but now that I'm fine, I can get back to it and continue where we left off. <clears throat> in the previous episode, we talked about editing modes in Emacs. Um, we learned about some basic concepts uh, that we need to learn before we can actually create a new um, mode in our Emacs. Um, today, we're going to create a minor mode um, just because like for the majority of times when you want to kind of create a new functionality in your Emacs, you're looking for a minor mode. Um, rarely you need to actually create a major mode and major modes are a bit more complicated. So we're going to stick to minor modes for now and we're looking to creating a major mode um, in the future. Um, so as an overview, we're going to start by creating the, creating like a super simple minor mode. And then we're going to have a look at interactive functions, hooks, and key maps. We're not going to go into details about like these three just because uh, they deserve their own uh, episodes, but uh, we're going to learn whatever we need to learn to m make our minor mode work. Um, so let's get to it. Oh, actually, um, I included three uh, risks, like three links to learn more about those three concepts. Um, not those three, but three useful links, basically. You can read them in your Emacs. They're part of Emacs manual. But just for the future reference, I included the web link. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get to it. Let's create a new file in somewhere like here let's call it m.el as a like m mode okay um yes please uh, Ooh. Ah, whatever i'm going to fix it later um so in the previous episode we learned about a function called define minor mode right and um, we're going to use the same thing today to have a look at its documentation and just uh, use describe function and as you can see the signature is define minor mode the mode name the like, like the string or the documentation and um, a list of keywords and values followed by like a, a optional body so um, let's see what else is there there's a bunch of keywords that we can use to actually um, change the behavior of our minor mode. The main one that right now we're looking for is global. So we're going to start by creating a global minor mode and then move to uh, like a low buffer local minor mode. So uh, first, uh, let's call it um, foo mode. Um, yeah, foo mode. Like, I should have like uh, named the file foo.el, but um, let's actually let's actually do that. So let's create foo.el, and then um, grab this, put it back here. Um, so we need a documentation. Uh, super simple minor mode. And we want it to be a global minor mode, right? And um, if you uh, actually uh, notice, like my linter is kind of uh, nagging about some issues in this in this first line, right? That's because we're missing a header for our elis file. Just to grab it from somewhere. Uh, I'm going to explain it in a bit, but basically um, it's a convention to add a header like this in your uh, ELIS file. So we need to change the title to be who uh, super simple minor mode. Right, uh, it follows by uh, like a co uh, copyright, like some, there's like some keys here that you can define um, as a metadata for your package. Um, 
like url author version like the license header then followed by like a commentary section to talk about like what does uh, this um, package uh do and finally a key a code uh, sorry a code key um followed by the actual code and at the end obviously we need to provide this uh, the feature which we call foo here and then uh foo.el ends here right um it should be right so uh, I already included a link for uh, ELISP headers um, to the resource section. You can read about like what other metadata you can actually include in this header, but that's a convention we're going to follow. Um, okay, now um, we have global set to T. Another thing, another key is LIDAR. LIDAR is basically a, just a string that we're going to use, like Emacs is going to use to indicate whether or not our mode uh, is active. We're going to use, okay. So um, I guess for now it would be enough. Let's uh, evaluate it and give it a shot. Oh, by the way, there's another important key which is called uh, interactive, yeah. Which by default is set to T. Oops, is set to T, uh, which means the minor mode that we're creating is going to be an interactive command. So an in interactive command is uh, is a, just a function that we can actually access it via uh, MetaX, like via our command interface. So uh, this thing is set to true by default. So if we look at it here, yeah um it, it it is set to true by default so we don't have to set it there's a bunch like a lot of uh, other uh keywords that we can use here but we're going to look at uh one or two later on but if you're interested you can actually refer to the documentation and some of them are uh, even undocumented you can have a look um at the source code it's not it's not that complicated but uh yeah, that's how you can actually uh, gain more information about uh, define minor mode macro. So let's see uh, where we are right now. Two more cases. So when I um, when I execute foo foo mode, it would have been better to call it foo bar mode. But anyway, um, when I um, interactively run foo mode as you can see in the bottom uh, in, in in my mode line here uh, we see the foo string that we provided as the lighter that means our foo mode is actually active now but since it doesn't do anything it's just sitting there not doing anything so uh, it's not excited at all but if I invoke foo mode again, as you can see on bottom left, foo mode is uh, deactivated now, and the foo string is not anywhere to find in uh, in the mode line. So uh, let's make it uh, like a bit more um, active. Let's um, print out something um, as an indicator. Uh, to see where, uh, like, when exactly our body is getting uh, executed. Uh, let's say we are here. So evaluate the mode again. Uh, full mode, uh, as you can see, it's uh, activated. And let's switch to the message buffer. Uh, and you see we are here message in our um, message buffer. So, um, that's like a super simple uh, minor mode, like literally just one uh, macro call. But uh, to make it more interesting, we need to learn more about those three concepts, hooks, interactive functions, and uh, key maps. So first of all, let's talk about interactive functions. What is an interactive function or basically what is a command? If you recall from the previous episodes, 
uh, we can create a function like this, right? Okay, let's call it foo, mm, foo uh, back or foo word. That's better, right? We have a function called foo word. Uh, it doesn't do much, just um, page foo word, right? Obviously, I can evaluate it here to see how it works. Right, and you see on the message buffer that uh, it just prints out that the string. It doesn't do much, and since it's just a function, I can't um, I can't access it from the meta x interface from the command interface. So if I say who word, it's not there. But if I add a, a function called interactive here, right? Um, and reevaluate the function. I can now find it in the command interface, and I can evaluate this function from the command interface, as I just did. Right. So this interactive uh, special form here is kind of a way to tell Emacs that I want this function to be a command. And let's see. As you can see, there's a command, there's a function called command p, which is a predicate function that tells us whether the following symbol is a command or not. So if I have another function called uh, bar uh, here, doesn't do anything, and I do command uh, well bar. As you can see, ooh, sorry. As you can see, it returns nil, right? Because bar is just a function. It's not an interactive function or AKA map. So, um, but interactive on its own uh, is a bit more complicated. I'm not going to go into details, but let me show you uh, some stuff. Let's, uh, let's say um, we want to have, let's define another, fun, another command called, um, star right all right uh let's make it interactive yes and uh then let it in there just the star right so super simple what it does is just let's see it insert a function uh <laughs> in there's an asterisk where we are at the buffer so for example, if I move here and then say a star, like choose the command star from the command interface, it just insert as a trick there, right? Super simple, nothing special. Now let's make it more interesting. Um, interactive basically gets uh, an argument. This argument can be a string or a list. Uh, we're going to go into more detail in the future. I'm going to show you just two uh different use cases if it is like if this string starts with the capital p then we can actually create a argument here let's call it n right uh what happens is when we invoke the, there's a concept in emacs called uh prefix command if i if i'm not mistaken i, I might be wrong about the name but the concept is like uh you can uh provide a value as a prefix command to your um, function. Uh, let's see, like when you see it in action, you'll get it, right? So when this string starts with P, it means, okay, I want to use that prefix command uh, concept and you pass the prefix command to as the first parameter to my function. So uh, again, it doesn't do much here, but just for the sake of argument, let's uh, print it. All right. So evaluate the function, and then if I uh, evaluate a star again, you'll see nil in the message section, not in the message buffer, because we didn't provide any uh, prefix uh, command to a star. Now, if I do 
control U and then choose a star, evaluate a star U. Now it prints four. Now, um, if I do control U and number three, and then star prints out three, right? So these are prefix commands that we actually are passing to uh, the star function. So how can we actually use, uh, like make use of this uh, functionality? Let's have a look. Uh, let's say we want to insert a bunch of asterisks based on that parameter n over there. We can do something like two times, we talked about two times in, in the past, and then um, if and if yeah if no and then zero otherwise and um and then here do, do, do. now evaluated so if i do a star right now did i do it so if I do a star, nothing will happen because we pass, oh, let's use one here, right? So, and I run a uh, star as a command directly, it just inserts uh, one asterisk. But if I do, for example, uh, control U 10 and then a star, uh, oops. go back there. Oh, here. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Control U, B, start. As you can see, I passed three as the prefix command and it just uh, inserted uh, three asterisks. So after this, N beca uh, becomes three, and in this loop, we like loop for three times and insert three asterisks. Um, that's a useful thing to have, right? Um, but to show you another uh, useful feature of uh, the interactive uh, um, special form, let's go for um, another interactive function. Let's call it this time um, finding file. I'm not going to implement it because it would be a, like a useful, uh, or useless function, but um, for the sake of argument uh let's say we have a file like this function gets a file and a string um interactive I'm going to use the same uh, special form but this time we're going to pass as the uh, argument we're going to pass as a string oh by the way um if you pass on uh, pass a string to interactive like it's going to parse the string line by line. So a new line, um, new, um, new line uh, character here will kind of be the separator between like different um, arguments for uh, interactive. So let's say um, I'm going to show you, show you how it works and explain it later. So let's say um, the first line starts with a small f. Like a lowercase f and then um i and the second line starts with s and uh, find in right and just we're going to um in term i bring those two variables in the message F. So again, super simple, nothing special. But when I actually um, um, invoke the function via the command interface, as you can see, it asks me to choose a file from my file system. I go with M and then ask finds, uh, find in the file that I chose just a second ago. And just pass a, like a random string. So as you can see in the message buffer, uh, 
that interactive string that argument that we pass to interactive special form caused uh, like basically asked us two for two inputs the first one was uh, like a file type and the second one was a string and then passed each to our argument to our fun function our arguments so also um, it uses like the format function uh, so basically you can use uh, strings like this like a placeholder holders like this to refer to the previous um, argument but uh, don't worry about this like i'm i'm just um, trying to be quick about inter interactive functionality right now i'm going to go into um, into details in the future but as you can see it's such a useful thing to have like i'm not going i'm not going to talk about it today but we can actually uh pass a list here and like do some uh fancy stuff in the mini buffer to get the input from user with completion and everything but uh well we're going to talk about this in the future but now just to give you uh like a really brief uh explanation of what just happened so uh interactive is going if the first argument is uh string interactive is going to parse it uh line by line and on each line if the string starts with some special uh letters or like characters basically it treats that line differently for for example here we start with a like a lowercase f that indicates that okay ask for a file for me and show this string as a prompt on the second line we have uh, like our line started with the uh, character like a lowercase s which is like okay i want to input like get an input in type of uh, string and show this prompt again um it's quite useful you you'll see it like all over the uh elise board um and here you have it like that's how interactive works in a nutshell um the second functionality that we need to talk about is hooks hooks are pretty simple and kind of really useful hooks are just a list of functions right so we can define a hook like this for example who um in it and just pass nil as the default value nil is like empty list right oh, oh by the way since as you can uh, see my um, my linter is kind of uh, complaining about missing dark string so it's a good practice to really write some dark strings for uh, your functions uh but since um we're not going to keep this um we're not going to keep this module around i'm going to skip that part but please for your own stuff always document your code because in my in my personal experience i'm working in this, uh, my own version of emacs for 13 years now you definitely will forget about like how things works and you're just doing yourself a favor um okay hooks so uh, hooks are just variables just a list of functions we can define them like a normal variable or even in a like a let binding doesn't matter and we can use add hook function uh, to uh, like add something add a function to a hook right so for example here we have uh, in each hook in evaluate it uh, in each hook and i can actually add a lambda here that says let's say yay hooks right and right now if i evaluate uh, the variable foo in its hook as you can see it's it returns nil if i evaluate the add hook uh, function it just gets uh hook name as the first uh, argument and as the second argument it gets a, like a function or a name of a function i'm going to show you in a second right so if i evaluate foo in its hook again as you can see it's a list with just one element and that element is a lambda in the um, list itself but let's add uh, another thing to our hook let's add um, 
let's add we have another function of fuba uh fubo sorry so who in it hook and then we can add the uh, word to our hook if you remember from uh, the previous episode this thing is uh, like a short cut for a function a special call right it means like it works like a single code but it indicates that this thing has to be a function now uh, if i evaluate this now our foo init hook contains two uh, elements foo word and lambda but uh, okay like this is how we can populate the hooks but how can uh, like how can i actually execute a hook so it's easy we can use run hooks and pass the hook that we want to actually um, evaluate or like we're going to walk through the loop of the hook and evaluate each element one by one so here um what was it yeah i'm going to run this hook and as you can see in the uh, message buffer uh the first uh the first string that is in uh, like this form actually printed out is who work which is here and then yay hooks from here so um since um as you can see just walked through the list and evaluated everything but since lists are efficient uh from the head meaning that like whenever you count something to a list it just uh, gets added to the um, head of the list so basically whatever you add to the who class is going to get executed first so last thing kind of first out kind of situation right um but when do we use hooks let's say you have a you have a minor mode or you have a function or whatever you need to provide a way to your user or to other people to customize uh, your minor mode or your um, function or whatever it doesn't uh, like the concept of hooks doesn't uh, kind of is not specific to modes only like you can use it wherever you want uh, in our example let's say um, uh, it's hard to come up with a, like a really good example here but let's say we're going to um check for a, like a special condition here we're going to just use uh, oh teacher blah right if the uh blah feature was provided by some other module then we're going to run uh copy paste it it's easier then we're going to uh run this hook here right otherwise we're going to ignore it and as you can see blood is not uh provided yet and this run hooks will never get executed um so we have our minor mode it works just the way we to but some other people might want to enhance this like let's say they have a like a uh, they have another module that provides that feature blah so they can have a function like for example like do something and in, in that function they will be like yeah add hook who in it hook and then a lambda it's not going to do anything but just to uh demonstrate um so this function would live in another place somewhere else and as long as you execute this function first uh to add this uh, lambda to the foo init hook then whenever the foo init uh, foo mode is uh, executed and the feature blah is out there provided by a module uh we're going to run that hook I mean, like um, many modes actually uh, take advantage of hooks and by default when you create this um, create a minor mode uh, i guess that macro creates um oh, sorry uh, let me allow it to do this yeah 
yeah when uh, the, when we create a minor, minor mode the define minor mode macro creates a hook for us right so this hook basically kind of works the same as what we did here but with, without that condition let's actually use it to see how it works so let's do this oh, come on models right so when i evaluate this uh, we added something to our mode there uh, and i evaluate the mode i don't know whether i evaluated before or not so when i do um when i uh, activate the mode again actually it was active uh, when i activate the mode again um when i active the mode uh, activate the mode again as you can see in the message buffer uh we see the string in the mode hook it means we alter kind of uh, enhance the functionality of uh, full mode or uh, like kind of alter the functionality of full mode by adding a lambda to its hook and this hook is created by the define minor mode macro as part of its job right but you can add more uh, hooks to your minor mode that uh, each of them runs in different places emacs comes with a set of uh, macros sorry with a set of hooks that you can actually use to enhance different functionality uh, functionalities of emacs for example you can add some functions to emacs uh well hook in emacs that runs after the initialization process of like the startup process of emacs is done or you can add like hooks basically to many different places um i'm going to actually i forgot to do this but i'm going to uh, include a link into the resources section and into the comment section below uh of um, some of the re re really uh, popular and useful um hooks in emacs that you can take advantage of so that's hooks um and we saw how, it, how they work but now uh i'm going to talk about key maps key maps are a little bit um like and uh, key maps can be really complicated we're going to talk about them maybe in the next uh, next episode but to simple like as a simple explanation key maps are just like a hash map of events uh of key bindings uh to the actual function that like to the handler to the function that needs to be executed in case of that uh, event um, that keyboard have event happened or mouse it doesn't have to be keyboard right so um again um key maps are just like uh, are just variables as well so we create a new one here let's call it uh, um who random map as a convention they always have their map suffix and uh, there's two functions to create um, key map one is uh, make a sparse key map that you need to use like most of the time and we're going to use it here i'm going to tell you how it works and the other one is make uh, key map yes make key map uh, the difference between make key map and make a sparse key map is that when you do when you use make key map uh, it creates a, like a full uh, full fledged key map with like a uh, table to map events to handlers and it, a table contains information for every possible event but um, make a sparse key map as the name suggests is just like a partial function it's kind of like a it just maps few events from its domain to its range so uh, most of the time you want to use uh, sparse key maps uh, that's how you define a key map in general like in like outside of the context of uh, like a mode and um, 
yeah we just define the key map and in order there's like a bunch of different functions to add a key binding to a key map but we're going to talk about define key here so define key gets a, like a as the first argument as you can see on the bottom left a key map which here is rnd map and then uh, a key we're going to use the keyboard macro to make it easier for us to define a key for example let's say control uh, no let's say super b right and then a function or a key map or a lambda as the target as the handler for that event we can say reward for example here so if i evaluate this form If I evaluate this form, um, what happens is like we just inserted a new event into our key map, which is a super B. Whenever uh, whenever the key map is active, super B will map will be mapped to who word function, who word command. It has to be a command. Uh, so whatever comes here has to be a command, right? Or a key map. Uh, but in case of a function, that should be interactive. Um, that's how, how you actually define keys in your key map. But also, okay, we can, uh, I told you that you can actually pass a key map here as well. So if we create a new key map here, let's call it like foo bar map, right? I can be like, yeah, foo bar map, and then super C to let's say target right so if i have two key maps i can use uh, a key map as the target for an event it means it's it's like chaining key maps together like basically we are the concept of uh, a prefix in emacs which is like um, uh, like bindings like control c or um, control a um, control x right these are like the prefixes uh by issuing that event emacs waits for another uh, like input from your side to decide what like what binding to uh, evaluate what handler to evaluate right uh, one way to do it is to chain maps together so there's a um, like i'm pretty sure uh there's a map Called, uh, I might be wrong, but control X map. No, or CTL map, or something like this. Oh, yeah, CTL map, right? Uh, it's a global key map that is responsible for handling events that starts with uh, control X, right? Um, so um, basically, Key maps are just tables or functions of input events to a, like a handler or a binding function or another key map. And you can chain them together like this by providing a key map as the target for an event. Or if you don't want to do this, you can directly do something like this. So it, it works still the same way, uh, but everything happens in just one key map. So to, uh, to invoke the command star, we need to do super B and followed by a super C uh, key binding, like an event. Um, key maps are uh, a bit co more complicated than this, but this is what we need for today's episode. So we're going to stick to it. We're going to talk about key maps in the future. Oh, one more thing. Um, there's a, like a hierarchy of priority when we talk about key maps. So when you issue a, like a key like a you come up with a key binding you issue a, like an event in your keyboard uh there's like bunch of active key maps that emacs has to choose from like which one to pick to uh handle this input key so it looks over um, some key maps based on their priority so it, it's a bit complicated again in the future, but basically it's like local key maps, then minor mode key maps, then global key maps, like or major mode key, map, key maps, then global key, map, key maps. Um, 
I included uh, included a link to learn more about key maps, obviously, but we're going to talk about it hopefully in the next episode. For now, uh, that's enough. Let's uh, use it in our uh, miner. Now that we learn about all three, we know how it interactive works. We can actually come up and let's have a look again at the documentation here. Yes. Um, oh yeah. So there's a key called key map, right? We can use this key to ask define minor mode macro to create a key map for us. Not to create a key map for us, to give it a key map to use as the default key map for our minor mode. We can pass a block to it. So let's create um, let's create a map um, here called, and bind it to the var local variable m. Make Right, and then we can do something like this. And replace this with M. R makes sense. Okay, let's remove use code. Make the ball a bit more clean. Now uh, we pass the key map, uh, like we created a key map here, right? Uh, and we're going to return that M, which is our key map, uh, as the key value for the key map keyword to define minor mode macro. So let's evaluate our mode again. Okay. Now let's disable the previous one and enable this new one. Now, if I do uh, super B and uh, followed by super C, as you can see on the bottom left, actually, before I uh, hit super C, I installed uh, a mode called which key that shows kind of when you have a, like a chain of key bindings and you start with the first prefix, it shows what comes next. Like it shows your different options. Right now we have only one option, which is super C that map to the star function. So when I do super C, as you can see, uh, stars uh, an asterisk shows up here, which means the star function got evaluated, right? So that's how you can add key bindings to your uh, minor mode. Super easy, right? So, and um, yeah, and as the final steps for today's episode, we're going to uh, teach this global uh, mode let's deactivate it again and create a like make it a buffer local mode so let's replace this by nil and now we have a minor mode that is buffer local so it can be active only on certain buffers um first of all um uh let's let me think about like a, like a cool function that I can use here. Oh, so yeah, a uh, full word might be a good, good idea. We're going to create a minor mode that uh, on each buffer, we can pick words in, in that buffer and stick it to a, like a list uh, that we can, uh, we can uh, inspect later. So um, let's create a super quick function. Things. And then um, we can stick it to a uh, counter. And we need to define, uh, I'm going to uh, tell you how it works in a second counter the value would be new of its uh, yeah. gonna be a list right okay so we have an interaction interactive uh, function here we have a command called foo word going to look at what we have 
at point like uh, there's a function called thing at, at point which is like right now my wherever your cursor are in your buffer cursor is in your buffer uh, in emacs literature we call it point right so right now i'm on line 39 and column 17 which is kind of uh, the coordinate for the point right it's like a point in a Descartes um, system um so um this function here uh you can refer to the documentation for uh, later on but returns a thing at point right and the first um the first argument is what type of thing right now we're choosing word so it's gonna choose a word from uh, the point we are and the second one is no properties we're going to talk about faces <clears throat> and properties in the future but like basically it says forget about the uh, like how it looks or like different properties that that text might have just return the text itself so this local variable word would be uh, just a random word wherever we are in the buffer it's gonna choose that word and then we're going to add it to a list called uh, foo counter and we define this foo counter here as a global variable right so let's see how it works um and here we're going to replace our key binding and the foo word right uh, a difference between uh, a local minor mode and a global minor mode is that when we switch buffers, that minor mode will get deactivated again, right? So let's activate it here. Oh, did I evaluate it? I don't know. Um, so right now it's active in our buffer, as you can see here in the mode line. Here in the mode line, right? Um, let me switch to a different buffer here to message but right now i'm in the message buffer and our mode is not activated you don't see the string foo in the mini bar but if i switch back to our uh Billy's buffer as you can see foo is there again and it's active only in this buffer but uh, a common way to actually um evaluate not evaluate like activate um minor modes based on the buffer is to stick them uh, to a hook of a major mode. So right now we're in Emacs Lisp mode, right? So it has a hook like any other mode. We can actually uh, use uh, foo mode, which is an interactive function on its own to this Elisp uh, hook, right? So right now I added foo mode to, uh, to my Emacs list mode hook. It means that whenever I visit a I visit an Emacs list file, the foo mode minor mode will be activated there. So let's create a uh, let's create a new uh, file here. Um, oh, we have one in something. Uh, actually, I have to close it because uh, we opened it before. Uh, we have this mode. So when I visit M again, right? Uh, as you can see on the mod line, we have foo active again. So who is active? We activate it by sticking the foo mode function to Emacs list uh, hook, or Emacs list mode hook. So it's active here, right? And I, if, if I do uh, super B, uh, as you can see on the right side, super B maps to who word and nothing happens because we don't have any text here but um let's go back it's like you open right so let's go to lags maybe right so i opened up another uh file like an elist file who is active again and if i do if i do super b here to activate the who word it just uh, got executed but i even forgot to do something uh, let's go back um let's do this here as well as an indicator of 
what's going on. Uh, counter and pull counter, right? Okay. We evaluate the function. Uh, go back to. to Okay, now, as you can see, the counter, uh, when I do super B, the full word actually uh, prints out something, but it prints nil, right? So, what I forgot to do is to, actually, instead of going crazy, we can add to list, to mutate the, uh, to mutate the, list like in place i don't like it in, in general but as an example so when i go back and do super b again as you can see uh, it adds that word to the list that we got right yeah now now i uh, run super b on def macro so our counter is def macro tag and then I can do this. Sorry, like Super B is set to uh, like was a bad thing that I chose. It, it mapped to some other function in my uh, main Emacs as well. So that's why sometimes it doesn't work. Um, as you can see, like on whatever uh, word that I like choose when I move my cursor or move my point. Uh, on like on that word and do super b it just pick that word and add it to a list right but here's the catch it, it's not a catch but i mean uh that list that we got here that counter uh full counter is actually a global variable so if i do super b here again as you can see like it adds the it added the counter uh, symbol to the list and there's like three other elements from the previous buffer. Sometimes um, you need to work with a, like a local a local value uh, instead of a um, global value. Local in this context means a buffer local. So I want this full counter to be buffer local. Since my minor mode is buffer local, I want the area of operation for my mode to be only in context of the, uh, the active buffer. In order to do that, Let's reset everything back. Uh, in order to do that, we can actually uh, mark that variable here as a buffer local. So uh, make local variable. Yeah, there's a function called make local variable that if we look at the uh, documentation, it says uh, make variable uh, have a separate value in the current buffer. So Whatever we pass here as the variable, which was full counter, right? Uh, full counter from this point in time is like the value of full counter for the current buffer would be different than the share, the global shared variable, right? And since we're going to activate our mode uh, whenever we visit a new buffer, it means like every time we visit a new buffer, this body of uh, the mode is going to get executed. So we're going to create a, create a new value, new buffer, local value for full counter for that specific buffer. So let's see how it works. Um, let's go back here. Uh, actually, let me switch back to message buffer here. And uh, let's, uh, like we're back at that other ELISP file. I have to deactivate this mode and reactivate it for the changes to get. Um... Oh, I had a, I have a view here. Oh, I got to this. Now it should be fine. I go back to flags and reevaluate, like deactivate the mode. Oh, it was deactivated, so I activated the mode again. And now, if I just walk around and do uh, super uh, B, as you can see, it just uh, adds the stuff. 
through the it adds the stuff to the list that is local to this buffer right um and if i move to another elisp uh, another elisp sorry i lost the uh train of thoughts so uh, if i move to another uh, elisp file and i start to do the same thing as you can see it like the value for that uh, counter is now totally different it's specific to this uh, buffer go back again and um, as you can see like i move this between different buffers but the value of the counter is specific to each uh, buffer um that's how you make uh local value like a buffer local variable a variable and uh, like a buffer local minor mode um so that's it but as as uh you may recall from several few uh episodes that we talked about, i guess like it was like uh, two episodes ago that we talked about like how to load uh, elisp files and like the, about the startup process of emacs you can literally um add this add hook into your init file require this module add it to the add this like add hook uh form to your uh, init script and make this like minor mode available everywhere in your emacs uh, minor modes are uh, quite simple easy to use and like quite useful i hope you enjoyed this episode and in the future episode hopefully we'll get to talk about key maps. thanks for watching and see you in the next episode